Hey there folks, I'm Mark from Spectrum Pulse, and today we have, from Lil Uzi Vert, The Pink Tape. Okay, is anyone seriously coming to me for a take on Lil Uzi Vert? My frustration with them is that while I get their appeal, the execution is never stuck. The production is sticky but feels perpetually unbalanced, lacking in groove, and awkwardly mixed on bloated albums. And for every extravagant imaginative flair in the delivery or the content, there are so many facepalm-worthy moments. Their traps Billy Idol, and they're probably best for the festival-ready bangers and little else. So going rap rock does feel like a natural evolution of Uzi's sound, and yet we're left with a project that always seems like it's on the cusp of being something potent, but then slides back into everything that makes Uzi such a frustrating artist, at least on the albums. Now this can be split into two parts, the sticky, synth-inflected, lethargic trap and rage music, which remains as underwhelming for me as always because the bloated, flexing, hedonism, and toxic relationships run together and become the worst thing melodrama can be boring, and then the rap rock experiments, borrowing from new metal that should hit way harder than they do, because the guitars are never really allowed to explode, and where Uzi's hype beast presence feels almost peripheral to the songs that don't utilize them to their fullest extent, including a cover of System of a Down's Chop Suey that I don't think anyone needed. Now what's frustrating is that there's actually a surprising number of cuts that legit work, like Arca's production on Suicide Doors, or the guttural distortion on Amp the jittery rage of X2, the cinematic wrestling flip on Nakamura, the nightmarish pitch down fire alarm, Werewolf with Bring Me the Horizon dropping the best bass line on the entire album, the chip tune of Pluto to Mars that kind of feels like a 2020 leftover, the glassy synth groove on Days Come and Go, Don Tolliver really delivering on Patience, the rumbling guitars on Rehab. Honestly, the album ends on a high note with its more personal deep cuts. But then you get the bad Travis Scott verse on A or an abysmal Nicki Minaj feature off the I'm Blue sample from Eiffel 65 on Endless Fashion, or just so many forgettable, abbreviated trap fragments with Uzi's shallow obnoxiousness, the stupid comparisons that they wind up making to their jewelry, or the panic at being perceived as gay that translates to some really overcompensating, insecure machismo that a non-binary rock star like them does not need to even validate or bring up. The bigots and parts of hip-hop don't don't want to understand or acknowledge any dimensions of queerness. Just keep on taking their bitches, they will understand that. So overall, look, it feels way too long, awkwardly sequenced, wildly uneven, but if this was streamlined into a tight half hour, it wouldn't be great, but the potential would have been better realized. It is better than I expected, it's got its moments, just as a whole, tough to recommend. So if you'd like to see any more reviews going forward, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you want to get reviews added to my schedule or support the channel, link to my Patreon right over there. As always, I'm Mark. I'll see you next time.